Hi, I'm Stephen Gauci and welcome back. In this video, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the overtone series um, and overtone manipulation uh, uh, and how this pertains to our, our tone, our sound. Okay, um, so in, you know, in the last uh, short video on tone, I mentioned how we need to uh, play the, the low B flat. We need to play every note on the horn as if we were playing low B flat. Essentially, the overtone series, what it is, is it's, it's basically you have a tone, and within that tone, there are many other tones that make up that tone. Uh, sort of like with colors, within each color there are, there are pigments, and you know, you, you know, certain colors you can split. So the overtone series is very similar to, um, to colors. So, you know, in each, each color, there are uh, different different colors inside, which which we call pigments. Okay, um, you know, for example, if a white light goes through a prism, then it comes out a rainbow rainbow colors. Okay, so you know, within that white light, there are many different colors, um, and and uh, that's what it's like with each note we play. Uh, for example, in a low B flat. Seems that my reed has dried out. Let me just check this out for a second. Okay. So, in a low B flat, we also have all these other tones. So I'm gonna I'm I'm popping these out off the low B flat fingering. So. because we, we feel these mostly in our throat. Um, okay, so a few uh, basic things about it. Okay, so the first overtone is an octave. So you have a low B flat. Okay, and then the next overtone is a middle B flat. And, and uh, we're going to use the low B flat fingering to get it. So, regards to the overtones is that you, you, you feel it in your throat. It's the Adam's apple. It's your voice box that moves. And you know, you should be able to feel that. Um, so really when we're doing the overtones, we want to pay attention to this. Our lip just stays out of the way. It has nothing to do with it. Okay, we're just putting attention in the corners, uh, like I discussed in the last video. Okay, we don't want to bite down like this. We just pull back. Okay, um, and uh, you know, for the higher notes, for the higher overtones, you, you just pull back a little bit more. And what that does is the shape of your mouth changes and it directs the air upward, which is, which is the direction we want for, to get higher notes. Okay, but your lip does nothing. This, the, these guys don't do anything. They're just out of the picture. They're just, you know, they don't really do anything at all. Okay, so. about intonation with the overtones. They don't have to be perfect. Um, that's, it's really not very important, um, and particularly at this point. Okay, so let's try um, uh, the next overtone, and the next overtone is going to be the fifth. It's going to be an, an F, like F with the octave Q. Okay, now. There's that one. 
Now, if you're, if you're starting right from the beginning and you've never done overtones before, that may be the limit of what you can do, you know, your first time at the gate. You know, um, maybe not even that, maybe just the first overtone, the, the, uh, the octave. takes time what what you have to develop we have to develop um, our the uh, our use of the throat okay of the voice box um, and it's just like when we talk um, we speak out of our voice box we don't speak out of our lips like this we speak out of our voice box okay and, and it's and it's supported by breath support so it's a combination of breath and the voice box and that's why each of us has a unique voice, okay? Um, you know, now with voice recognition technology, you know, locks are being replaced by voice recognition, okay? Um, and that's because each voice box is completely unique. And if, so that when we speak out of our voice box, we have a completely unique voice. You know, there's no one in the world that sounds quite like us. And we don't have to do anything for it. We don't have to practice it. It has to do with, um, this, the, the mechanism is so subtle, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty much microscopic, you know, some of the fibers, the nerve fibers that, that create the sound. Um, so it's, it's just so subtle and so, so fine that no two are alike. Um, so it's not a matter of, when we talk about having our own sound on saxophone, it's not a matter of finding your sound, you don't find your sound. Or, or developing your sound. Um, it's not really that, um, in a manner of speaking. Um, what it really is, is just discovering your voice box. It's your voice box. That's it. It's there already. The sound is there already. Your voice is there. It's the problem is that, or the, the, if there is a problem, and you don't have a voice on saxophone, it's because you're not playing out of your voice box. That's what it is because that's the only voice you're ever going to have on saxophone. Okay, so, you know, it's just to clear up this misconception where, you know, we can, we can create our own voice. It's going to be some, my voice is going to be some mysterious thing. It's going to be hardcore, man, my voice. Because I'm angry. No, it's not, it doesn't work that way. Your voice is your voice box. And whatever you do with your voice box, if you're angry, well, you're going to, you're going to scream with your voice box. But you can be as angry as you want, and if you're not if you're not shouting with from your voice box, it's going to be weak. Doesn't matter how angry you are, because you're not speaking with your voice. Okay. So um, now the reason I'm saying all this is because the overtone series it's it's completely from your voice. When we work with overtones, we're working with our voice box. We're working with with the um, uh, with the throat. Okay and breath combined, okay? Uh, so, and that's the, that's the full value of it. In my opinion, this is the value of the overtone series, not to do some cool, you know. I mean, that's, that's fun and everything, but that's not the real value. The real value is that when you've worked with the overtone series for quite a while, what happens is, even when you play the regular notes with regular fingerings, you always sing out of your voice box from there on. You just never, it never turns off. So it's as if all of, of the notes are overtones. You're playing them in, uh, in that way. And then you really sing. That's what it is. Okay? So. There's your, your first octave. Then we have the fifth. is the octave. And then the next one after that is the third. That would be the high D. Okay. And then after that, uh, we have the fifth. Seventh, dominant. 
Again, the important thing, it's, it's not complete accuracy, okay? Um, because what happens is when, we, when we, we, we begin to use our throat, the throat can, you know, the, so watch, when, with my voice, I can go like this, I can go like that. That's amazing if you think about it. You show me an instrument, you can do that on the trombone. Okay, right? But, you know, there's not many instruments you can do that on. Okay, it's because our, our, you're, you're playing with your voice box. And it's my voice box is the reason why when I sing, I, we can do that. We can do amazing things with our voice. Okay? It's because we, we're singing out of here, speak out of here. Okay? When we get angry, you better not do that! But it changes immediately. The emotional, you can shift your emotions in a split second. You can jump up three octaves, okay? If, if somebody runs over your toe, your voice is going to immediately respond, okay? Now, in order to have those kind of reflexes on saxophone when you're playing music, you have to sing out of your voice box. That's how all the magic happens, you know? That's how you can do all this stuff, you know? <laughs> happens whatever I hear I can sing okay and and I'm just singing it out of my thro throat and that's the reason why the notes just pop out okay so um, so again the overtone series um, we want to practice these and we want to practice them like this okay so we went from the low B flat into the middle B fingering a low B flat fingering um, and now I'm going to start on the middle B oh, I'm sorry that was that was the uh, F. I'm going to start on the middle B with the, with the low B flat fingering all of this that's the F with the low B flat fingering and we're just changing the air direction uh, for the higher notes, for the higher overtones, the higher we go, the higher up you want to aim your air. Now you don't want to move the saxophone. The saxophone has to stay uh, stable, it has to stay in the same position all the time because the, uh, the concept is that the, the air hits the roof of the mouthpiece for the higher notes. Okay? So if we move the saxophone, the roof of the mouthpiece, it, it, it's always someplace different. Okay, so basically the saxophone's got to stay in this direction, okay, just like this, and you're, and you're uh, aiming the air up this way, okay, and the higher the notes, the, the higher you go, and so you're almost aiming straight up to the really, really high notes, so. Okay, that one was the F, okay, and if, if you'll notice something that, um, my eyes tend to change direction and, uh, and the wind tends to follow the direction of my eyes, okay? So when you're playing the higher notes, you know, if you look up, your breath tends to follow the direction of your eyes. I don't know why, but it does that, okay? So. Once you get a, a couple of overtones, okay. Once you have two or three that you can that you can do, 
and you know, and, and be patient with yourself. It's it, it takes a long time, and it, you you know you should incorporate this into a daily warm up. This shouldn't be your your main practice because you just get frustrated. It's it should be you know you, you do this for you know maybe maybe you know ten percent of the time you practice, but you do it every time, every day, hopefully. Um, every time you take out the horn, you work on the overtones, and you know when you get a few of them that you can do, you want to work with them like this, like back and forth, you know. Right, and then the, and then the middle B flat off the little B flat. So I went middle B flat to the F with off with the low B flat fingering. sound ring out. Okay, now when you have all the fingers down on your saxophone, we are fingering a low B flat, even though you're popping up out these other notes, you're fingering a low B flat and all the metal is vibrating. So this is the truest tone on saxophone when all the keys are down. That's your truest sound. So you want to hold those notes out and really get used to that sound and feel how it feels in your throat. Feel how it feels in your gut, um, because this—that's it. That's the stuff. That's your sound. Okay. Not when you have like you know a, a high D fingering like that down, and, and like you're only playing this much of the horn. Okay. Just when all the metal is vibrating, you're using all your breath, and you're and you're singing out of your your, your voice box. That's your true sound. So you want to get used to that sound, and it will permeate all of your playing, no matter what fingerings you use, over time. If you do this every day, just as an exercise, okay? Well, so you want to try that, and then you also want to do the same process with the low B, okay? Well, here's low B clap. Now there's a low B, okay? Okay, so I went B to the middle B, and right off the, of the low B fingering. Even if you, it, it, it never happens, even if you can never get it, you know, every time it's like, <laughs> seems impossible. You still work with it because you want to feel um, what the barrier is, okay? If it's a breath thing, if it has to do with, you know, uh, the note breaks, when you blow a certain, well, you want to push up against that wall because your body, your body is learning how to fix that mistake. It's not an intellectual exercise. Your breath needs to, needs to push up against that wall and feel, oh, okay, your breath knows better than, than we do. Our breath knows everything. The breath knows all, okay? Once the breath can feel, can feel the obstacle, it will figure out a way. It will know exactly what to do, okay? And, you know, uh, we don't have to worry about it on a conscious level, but what we need to do on a conscious level is to create the situation where your breath, where your body, where your muscles, your throat, okay, can have this time and the space to feel all these obstacles. They have to feel it, you know, body, physical stuff, it's all touchy-feely. It's not like a calculator, it's not up here. Okay, remember this is kind of like music, music is like, you know, half sports uh, and half, I guess, mathematics sort of. But I would say it's more like 
like two thirds sports and one third mathematics. Okay, it's two thirds physical. Okay, now, uh, so. Obstacle, you just lean into it and uh, let your body figure it out. Okay, now then the next overtone. So then we have the uh, middle B flat, off, I'm, I'm sorry, the middle B off, off the low B fingering. And that's your F sharp, the fifth. So middle B to the F sharp. like that for you know for months and you work with them every day and your throat will get stronger and your breath will get stronger and eventually you'll, you'll pop the next one out um, it's a very personal thing okay so and then the next one we want to also practice off the low C saxophone is different okay you know some saxophones are brand new and they have all the latest technology and the notes just pop right out other saxophones are 80 years old you know they're from the 1920s or the 30s or whatever it is and and they have this amazing tone but there's there's stuff about them maybe if you play a low C it needs a bit more of a push Okay, you know, this is all like you, um, you have to learn your horn too, okay, and it's, it, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, um, or, or every instrument plays a little bit different. So that's, that's a part of the equation as well, and, and the solution is the same as it is, you know, um, with everything else where you, you have to lean into, lean into the obstacle, okay, if a no cracks, let your body figure out how to deal with your horn because it's going to be different. Okay, every horn is going to be different and your body is going to have to learn. Your body will know your horn. They'll, you know, they'll become like one if you, if you practice uh, for long enough and, and, and the right way. Okay, so uh, we're almost finishing up here and then we have the... Uh That was the middle C to the, to the G, high G, and then down, okay, and then the G to the high C. You see now, now some of the overtones, they don't, they don't want to land on the very next one. Maybe they want to skip that one and land on the next lower one. Okay, we have to learn with our throats and our breath, our voice pops and our breath, how not to let it skip. We don't want, we want to make sure it goes, okay, it's like a little rum, you got to make sure it catches. Same 
it's the same process. So off of a low C sharp. something out of that and uh, certainly we'll be covering um, more more of this material we'll be revisiting overtones and and uh, other aspects of, of tone um, in, in other videos um, so um, please keep checking back and um, thanks for coming out and I hope you got something out of this and we'll see you next time take care bye bye